This morning I am concluding a series of homilies on the fourth chapter of John as we have been exploring Jesus' conversation with the Samaritan woman at the well. After Jesus revealed her parched soul, and after he revealed himself as the Messiah, the living water for her thirst, we come now to our text today. John chapter 4, beginning at verse 27 through 30, and then verses 39 through 42. Just then his disciples came, and they were astonished he was speaking with a woman. But no one said, what do you want, or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with him, and he stayed there two days. Many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it's no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The word of the Lord. Be Let us pray. Holy God, on this beautiful day, we bow our heads in prayer for those who are being buffeted by the great storms in Florida. We pray for their safety, and we pray that as your spirit would cast out their fear, so would that spirit now come into this place and allow us to encounter your words in startling new ways as only your spirit can do. We ask it in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. An irony is something that turns our expectations in on themselves. Ironies depict an, an outcome that's different than what we would have thought. And thus, irony is a very helpful interpretive guide for the gospel that just keeps claiming holiness is a very hard thing to control. For example, trying to make ourselves spiritual, we only make ourselves into Pharisees, which is ironic because Jesus kept denouncing the Pharisees for their lack of true spirituality. Blessed are the poor in spirit, Jesus said, for theirs is the reign of God. Ironic. The Gospel writer John loves irony, almost as much as he loves metaphors. And this text that I just read is filled with them. Here's the first one. The disciples return to the well and they are dismayed to see Jesus alone with this woman talking to her. Later, they get very concerned that Jesus isn't eating well. <laughs> Meanwhile, the woman leaves her water jug and goes back to town 
and starts talking to everybody about Jesus. So isn't it ironic that the disciples who were called to be evangelists are absolutely preoccupied with things that don't matter, where this woman that they are worried about is doing some evangelism for Jesus. And wouldn't it be ironic to consider that while so many of us are so sure of our calling, are so devoted to discerning our calling, that the people who are really doing the work of Jesus have no notion of a religious vocation. Now here's another one. When the woman gets back to town, this is her evangelistic strategy. She says, come see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? Come see a man who knows the hard truth about me. He knows everything about me. The five husbands, the guy I'm living with now, the insatiable thirst, he knows it all. And this is so compelling to all of the respectable people in Sychar, that they immediately drop everything and go to the well to meet this man. Isn't that ironic? We work so hard to improve ourselves. Maybe that's one of the reasons you came to seminary. But if you heard that there was someone who really knew everything about you, who knew all the hard truth that you have been fleeing into one achievement after another, oh, you too would drop everything to find that person. Because it would mean that you no longer have to try to hide behind respectability that you were really known at last, and hope had found you. Deep in some part of our souls, we've always known that it is only as we bow down that we are lifted up. A third one. As we discovered earlier, this woman had to come to the well in the heat of the day by herself because she was disgraced, disremoved from the means of grace. Meanwhile, all of the respectable people huddled together back in their community of Sychar. But it was the disgraced woman who found Jesus at the margins, who, according to John, is the means of grace. So isn't it ironic that this disgraced woman finds Jesus out at the margins while all of the respectable people are actually removed from the means of grace back in their community, which means that it's the respectable people who are truly disgraced. And I don't have to push the irony that much further to wonder if we who huddled together in the church, anxious about its future, wondering if God's going to do something to help the church, need to lift up our eyes to see all of the grace of God that is occurring on the margins around the church. Here's one last irony. When the Samaritans went to the well to listen to Jesus, they were so impressed by him that they invited him to come, and he did, and he stayed 
in their town for two more days. And we're told that many came to believe because of his words. It's interesting that we're not told that Jesus did any miracles or signs there as he had to do in his own communities. No, apparently, it was just because of his words, which is all he gave them, which is all that actually we have are words from the gospel. But these words were enough for many to come to believe and to say at the conclusion of our text, truly, this is the Savior of the world. This is the first time in the Gospel of John that Jesus receives this designation. And isn't it ironic that the people who figured it out were the Samaritans, who in spite of their own efforts at trying to gain some respectability amongst themselves, were still regarded as disreputable by the respectable Jews who would refuse to even enter their town. Again, an irony is something that turns our expectations in on themselves. What are some of the holy ironies in your drama with God? Maybe for a long time you had been living in fear of something that might happen only to discover that it was fear itself that was the big problem. It was the fear that was driving all the bad decisions. Or maybe you devoted yourself to working for justice, but along the way you became mean and unjust to the people around you. Or maybe you devoted years of your life to the study of theology and to learning about God, only after getting a degree to discover that you still do not know God. Some ironies are tragic. Whether you make your way to Jesus through the straight and narrow path, which I suppose some do, <laughs> or through the winding path with lots of twists and ironic turns in it, in the end, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that you make it there, that you find your way to this well with living water. That's what matters. And you will know that you have tasted of this water if you are finally no longer thirsting for something more. And if after having been to the well and returning on the journey of service to Jesus, you find that you lose your way or that the old thirst return, that's okay. You know where the well is. Just come back to it and to Jesus who is always waiting with the living water. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.